Lecture 2. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the virtual university's course on business and technical communication. Today we will look at oral communication. We will talk about the different types of oral communication which include extempore, impromptu, memorization and reading. We will also look at the different modes of delivery for making oral presentations and the different guidelines for making the delivery of oral uh, presentations. It is important that you communicate well when you whether you are communicating orally or in writing and ideas are useless unless you are able to communicate them properly to somebody else. For example, if you look at the take the example of Ahmad who majored in uh, metallurgy, he has analyzed a group of pistons that broke when used in experimental automobile engines. His skillful analysis is of no use unless he communicates the results to someone else such as the engineer who must redesign the pistons. Obviously, if you have uh, identified a problem, you found a solution to a problem for example, like Ahmad who identified uh, the problem of uh, the uh, group of pistons that broke down and uh, he analyzed why it happened and maybe what to do uh, to uh, make sure that it did not happen again. All this is of no use unless he is able to communicate his ideas to the engineers who are able to fix them or to people who are going to implement what he what his ideas are. So, it is important that whatever you have in your mind you are able to communicate it well and properly to your audience. Uh, whether you communicate that in writing or whether you communicate that in speech orally is something for you to decide depending on the purpose of that communication. In today's lecture we will look specifically at oral communication and we will cover the different types of oral communication, the modes of delivery and the guidelines for delivery as I mentioned earlier. Now, oral presentations can be informal and formal both. It depends on what the purpose is, the ex there are explicit purposes which are obvious known to people and there are implicit purposes which are not known to everybody, but they are there, they are hidden purposes. So, both these explicit and implicit purposes will determine whether your presentation is going to be informal or formal and also the delivery situation, where is it that the presentation has to be made, that will also determine whether it is to be a formal presentation or an informal presentation. An oral presentation can be almost any report type such as a design review, a proposal or a conference talk. Whatever the specific type of uh, presentation however, an effective oral presentation is carefully planned with your objectives in mind and it play, pays close attention to the demands of your audience. Obviously, if you cannot pay attention to the demands of your audience, if you do not know what your audience wants or what your audience is expecting from you, then your presentation cannot achieve its purpose. اس لئے ضروری ہے کہ جو آپ کے خیال سے آپ کی جو آڈینس ہے یا سننے والے ہیں وہ ان کی جو ایکسپیکٹیشنز ہیں وہ جو چاہ رہے ہیں اس پریزنٹیشن سے وہ ہی ان کو ملے اور جب تک آپ یہ اس چیز کا دھیان نہیں رکھیں گے آپ کی پریزنٹیشن جو ہے وہ افتی افیکٹیو نہیں ہوگی لیٹس ہاو اللوک ایٹ ایک کمپیرزن ٹیبل بیٹوین ریٹن اور اورل کمیونکیشن کیا کیا فرق ہیں ریٹن کمیونکیشن میں اور اورل کمیونکیشن میں ان کو دیکھتے ہیں ان ریٹن کمیون uh, publications uh, which are written permit uh, potentially unlimited audience over time and place. Obviously, if something has been written down, then potentially uh, the uh, time over which it is views, uh, viewed is unlimited because once it has been written down, then it can be viewed over a la long period of time and even where it is viewed is not limited. The written uh, communication can go from one place to another and you do not have to be physically present there. Whereas, oral communication is generally limited to time and place of delivery. Oral communication has to be done at a particular time at a particular place and it cannot be duplicated in exactly the same way at another time or place unless it has been recorded. In written communication, there is no direct audience interaction. So, that is another major difference between written and oral communication that in written communication, there is no direct interaction between audience uh, and the presenter whereas, in oral communication there is a very high level of audience interaction 
or at least a high level of audience interaction is possible. It can be low or high, but there is direct interaction between the audience and the um, presenter. Another difference is that of structure, whereas in written communication, there is a very refined argumentative structure. Oral communications rely on simple presentation of main points. Written communication may have a complicated tarike se, jo bhi points hain, wo argumentation uh, khasi complicated bhi ho sakti hai, jabke oral communication may jo points hain, unko bohat clearly, directly state kiya jata hai. Also, in uh, written communication, there is a large volume of detailed information which can be communicated. Khasi zyada information bhi uh, communicate ki ja sakti hai written communication mein aur khasi detail bhi uh, padhne wale tak pahunchai ja sakti hai likhne uh, ke liye jabke oral communication mein bahut mehdood information di ja sakti hai kyunki zahir hai uh, ek to time ka factor hota hai dusre ye ki jo audience ki uh, kitni information wo absorb kar sakte hain wo bhi aapko dekhna padta hai so when in written communication a large number of information can be uh, sent out in oral communication, the amount of information is limited. Moreover, in written communication, the syntax and diction that is used is very precise. The sentence structure, the vocabulary is very, very pre precise. It's, ve it's tailored to written communication. It's more formal as well. Uh, in contrast, in, in oral communication, the syntax and the diction that is used, the style of speaking, uh, the style of communicating is very conversational. It's less formal than written communication, it's more conversational. Uh, similarly, in written communication, the emphasis is text, whereas in oral communication, the emphasis is on visuals. Just tarah written communication mein humne baat ki ke sentence structure formal hota hai, isi tarah written communication mein jo text hai, jo content content oral presentation mein style bhi conversational hota hai zara casual hoti hai vocabulary aur grammar jo istemal kiya gaya hota hai aur iske ilawa zyada emphasis jo hai wo visuals pe hota hai ki jo cheez aap sath mein dikha rahe hain another difference is that in written communication it's the reader who controls the pace of presentation. It's the reader who decides when to take a break, when to stop reading, how long it should take uh, to read a particular document, etc. Whereas in oral communications, it's the presenter who decides the pace. You as a presenter decide how many gaps to take, how many pauses to make, uh, how long the presentation to, should take or how short the presentation should be. Even if in written communication, as the presenter, you may have taken, for example, four days to write a particular paper or report. The reader might read it either in 10 minutes or they might take a week to read it, depending on the speed that they determine. In oral presentations, however, even if you've taken four days to prepare the presentation, you, will, you do not have the option of presenting it over four days. The option will be that it, what you determine, but it will also be restricted to time, as we said earlier. And the reader, the or the listener, the audience, does not have the choice of how long the presentation will take. Now, effective oral communication is a combination of many skills. It involves outlining and planning, preparing overhead slides or other display media. It involves rehearsing and delivery. So, whereas first you will outline, plan what needs to go in the presentation, then you will prepare accordingly the visuals, the overheads or the uh, slides or display material that goes with it. Then once you've got that prepared, you will rehearse, you will practice and then eventually you will deliver. And all these require a combination of many, many, many different skills. When we talk about formal and informal uh, oral reports, we need to keep in mind that an oral report may be delivered around a small table with just a few listeners or it can be a large auditorium uh, where you're delivering and the, the audience might consist of, a, of hundreds of people. So that will also determine the size of the audience, the context in which the presentation is to be delivered will determine 
whether the presentation is to be formal or informal. Obviously, if the presentation is in front of hundreds of people, it is more likely that it is going to be formal. Informal oral reports are generally characterized by small group settings with a high degree of audience interaction and a relaxed manner of delivery and dress. Now, in informal presentations, it is more likely that the group will be small. Zaruri nahi hai ki har bar informal interaction jo hai wo uh, informal presentation chote group ke samne hi ho ya har bar jab chote group ke samne in, in, uh, presentation ho rahi ho to wo informal hi ho formal bhi ho sakti hai lekin zyada chance ye hota hai ki informal presentations jo hain wo ek chote group ke liye present ki jati hain aur usme jo mode of delivery hota hai wo bhi informal hota hai thoda sa dress sense dress bhi informal hota hai and aur jo audience ke sath interaction hai wo zyada hota hai यानी के जो प्रेजेंटर हैं वो ज़्यादा अपोजिस करेंगे जो ऑडियंस है वो सवाल जवाब पूछ सकती है या डिस्कशन बीच में हो सकती है जबकि जाहिर है बड़े ग्रुप में इसकी पॉसिबिलिटी नहीं होती इनफॉर्मल प्रेजेंटेशंस कैन फॉस्टर द फ्री एक्सचेंज ऑफ आइडियाज एंड दे कैन बी इम्पॉर्टेंट फॉर प्रोड्यूसिंग एक्शन आइटम्स बेसिकली इफ दे इज़ अ स्मॉल ग्रुप ऑफ पीपल एंड दे इज़ द पॉसिबिलिटी दैट आइडियाज कैन बी एक्सचेंज दैट they can be pauses in the presentation and people can talk to each other or sp- and especially to the presenter then uh, it's also more likely that it can be decided what action to be taken immediately rather than people going away with the ideas and then deciding on actions that need to be taken as a result of the presentation to informal mein bahut zyada likelihood hoti hai ke interaction zyada hogi aapas mein baatein log zyada kar payenge जाहिर है काम के मतलब की बातें और उसकी वजह से जो भी उनने एक्शन लेना होगा वो आराम से जल्दी डिसाइड हो जाएगा ओरल प्रेजेंटेशंस इन प्रोफेशनल एनवायरनमेंट जनरली फॉर्म इनटू टू कैटेगरीज दे कैन बी इंफॉर्मेटिव और दे कैन बी परसुएसिव नाउ इंफॉर्मेटिव स्पीकिंग और इंफॉर्मेटिव प्रेजेंटेशन हैव ऑडियंस लर्निंग एज दे प्राइमरी गोल सो वेन we say that a particular presentation is going to be informative then the idea is that we are expecting that the audience will learn something from it an informative speech may explain a concept uh, intru- um, instruct an audience demonstrate a process or describe an event for example what i'm doing right now is informative speaking i'm explaining a, con- a concept i'm instructing an audience similarly uh informative speaking could be demonstrating a process or describing an event all things which tell the audience something in a professional setting the informative speech may take many different forms it can be in the form of an individual or group report oral briefings can be informative speaking panel discussions and oral critique these are all uh, these are all different forms of informative speaking persuasive speaking on the other hand is used to influence what an audience thinks or does it not used to tell an audience something but it's used to influence or change the way they are doing something or they are thinking about something some of the goals of persuasive speaking include uh, reinforcing the attitudes beliefs and values that an audience already holds they can be to uh, inoculate an audience against counter persuasion to make sure that the audience does not get persuaded against the idea to isliye usko ek um, preventive measure ke taur pe persuasive speaking ki jati hai ke audience jo hai wo kisi aur se persuade ho ke us idea ke khilaf na ho jaye it's also used to change attitudes अगर ऑडियंस का एक एटीट्यूड है और आप उनको किस आप उनका एटीट्यूड चेंज करना चाह रहे हैं या आप चाह रहे हैं कि वो उनकी बिलीफ कुछ डिफरेंट हो जाए तो फिर परसुएसिव स्पीकिंग से वो की जा सकती है एंड आल्सो टू मोटिवेट एन ऑडियंस टू एक्ट अगर आप चाह रहे हैं कि जो सुनने वाले हैं वो किसी एक नुकते पर कोई एक पर्टिकुलर एक्शन लें तो तब भी परसुएसिव स्पीकिंग की जाती है ताकि वो मोटिवेट हों कि वो एक्शन ले सकें there are at least four delivery methods for making an oral presentation these methods are called extempore impromptu memorization or reading method 
The extempore or the ext extemporaneous method involves significant effort, but it also results in a degree of quality that tells your audience that you care about them and the subject. Now, basically this means that when you are engaging in extemporaneous uh, speaking, you are making the effort to prepare with the result that you get quality and the audience realizes and or the audience is sure that you have cared enough to prepare. So, extempore mein aap preparation karenge aur uske natije mein aapki jo presentation hai uski zahir hai quality achhi hogi. The extemporaneous method requires the detailed laying out of the presentation from the beginning to end. Jo bhi aap presentation banayenge uski khasi detail mein aap tayari karenge. Uh, it involves doing your homework to fill in knowledge gaps. Extemporaneous um, presentation ke liye aapko khasi research karni padegi, kuch apna pehle se karna padega, kuch background uh, work karna padega taake aapki apni knowledge mein agar kahin kami hai to wo puri ho sake. It also involves the use of 3 by 5 cue cards or similar uh, methods, uh, similar prompts to jog your memory on specifics and to keep your presentation on track. So, in an extempore uh, presentation, you will use some kind of cue, either small 3 by 5 cue cards that you can look at when you are or that you can glance at when you are presenting just so that you do not forget or any similar paper or something which looks neat and has key points of your presentation so that you do not forget. The impromptu method on the other hand is when there is no formal preparation and the presenter just stands or sits in front of the audience without having prepared and gives a presentation. Now, this it is impromptu, it is off the cuff, it is unprepared and this impromptu method is characterized by poor organization and incompleteness. These are two main characteristics that come across in impromptu uh, presentations. It tells the audience, the message that goes to the audience is that you as a presenter are indifferent about them. Zahir hai, jab aapne tayari nahi ki hui, to aapki presentation jo hai, usme bohat chance hai, bilke 99% chance hai, ki aapki presentation jo hai, usme koi na koi kami reh jayegi. Kuch organization zahir hai, uski utni achhi nahi hogi, jitni extempore prepared presentation ki hogi. Isse audience ko ye message milta hai, ya ye pata chal, ye andaza hota hai, ki shayad aap unse indifferent hai, Aapko ehsaas nahi hai unki needs ka aur aapne is, is liye tayari nahi ki aap unko bohat casually le rahe hai. The memorization method, the third method that we mentioned is risky. Basically the memor memorization method means that you have memorized the whole presentation and you are not relying on any visual aids. Now obviously this is risky because you can lose where you were in the presentation if you get distracted a bit then you can lose your place in the presentation or you can leave something out at the end or in somewhere in the middle and in a panic you may also revert to impromptu method which means that in if you panic if you miss out what you had uh, a part of what you had memorized then you will be forced to speak without any preparation and this can result in disaster so Try not to rely on the memorization method because if you have to do something, you will not be able to do it. And if you have to do it, you will not be able to do it. So, you will have to do it. You will have to do it. It will fall apart. And then you will have to go impromptu. You will have to do it. Because if you have to do it, you will have to do it. And if you have to do it, you will have to do it. Now, you will have to do it. You will have to do it. तैयार करना पड़ेगा और वो फिर बहुत कंफ्यूजिंग और डिजास्ट्रस हो सकता है। Finally, the reading method. It might be acceptable if you're presenting a discourse on some technical topic about which you lack expertise. If it's something technical, if it's something that you do not know much about, it's co as concepts that you're not be able to talk about without reading, then it might be acceptable. Otherwise, generally, the reading method is not acceptable. Basically, because if you are reading, then there is no audience interaction and also if you are constantly reading from a paper, then it bores the audience and also it 
gives the impression that you do not know anything about your subject and th therefore you are having to read. So, if you have to tell one thing constantly, then your audience will be able to tell you that you have to topic ke bare mein bilkul nahi pata ya bahut kam pata hai isliye aapko constantly padhna pad raha hai isliye isko bhi avoid karna chahiye sirf us case mein ye acceptable hoga agar koi bahut technical topic hai jiske bare mein present kar rahe hain and it's also understood that you may not know too much about it then it might be acceptable an example could be in presenting a paper at a technical meeting for a colleague who might be ill for example so, if you are at a technical meeting, you have to present a paper, it's, everybody knows that you have not written the paper, you are reading it for a colleague who is ill, then it's acceptable. Now, when you are preparing for the presentation, as we said, it's better to prepare, it's better to present extempore rather than impromptu, uh, so you need to obviously have some preparation done before you actually uh, make a presentation. But irrespective of whatever method of delivery it is, even if you are reading, the presenter must consider the following parameters in preparing for the presentation. These parameters are knowledge of the audience, knowledge of the subject, what it is that you are talking about, the use of time, how much time you have, how will you use that properly, rehearsal, you obviously need to practice before, and personal appearance and grooming. All these five points are very, very important and you have to keep these in mind when you are making a presentation, no matter what the mode of delivery is, especially when you're making an extemporary presentation, but even for the other three types, you have to keep these points in mind. Additionally, the preparation and use of visual aids is an important element of any effective presentation. Obviously, if you are reading, then maybe you will not be using too many uh, visual aids or if you are if you are making an impromptu presentation then you will not have any visual aids and that's why also these presentations are not very effective so to, for an uh, for a presentation to be effective make sure that you have appropriate and well planned visual aids talking of knowledge of the audience that we said we need to keep in mind you need to be careful that you're not patronizing your audience just because you are make, uh, informing them or persuading them about a subject does not mean that they are in any way inferior to you don't speak down to them or or up to them as your as your audience basically this means that you shouldn't think that they are below you in terms of knowledge and you shouldn't even make it very obvious that they are if they are they're very uh, much more highly knowledgeable than you are so don't speak up to them don't become subservient to them either speak to them on an equal footing also keep in mind how much do they already know about your subject zahir hai jab tak aapko ye nahi pata hoga ki aapke audience ko pehle se aapke subject ke bare mein kitna pata hai aapki presentation effective nahi ho sakti kyunki ye bhi ho sakta hai ki aap aise points bata rahe ho basic jo audience ko bahut pehle se pata hai aur phir wo bore ho jaye या ये हो सकता है कि आप बहुत आप ये ज्यूम कर रहे हैं कि आपके ऑडियंस को बेसिक चीजें तो पता हैं और आप एक एडवांस लेवल पे प्रेजेंटेशन कर रहे हैं और फिर ऑडियंस को कुछ समझना आए तो इसलिए जरूरी है कि आपको ये पता हो कि आपके ऑडियंस को अंदाजन आपके सब्जेक्ट के बारे में कितना कुछ पता है ऑल्सो यू शुड नो दी एज लेवल ऑफ दी ऑडियंस एज वेल एज इट्स मेंबर्स लेवल ऑफ एजुकेशन सोफिस्टिकेशन एंड स्पेशल इंटरेस्ट इट ऑलवेज हेल्प when your audience is of a similar profile agar aapki audience milti julti ho ek ek hi unki profile ho age level similar ho um, educational level similar ho interest kuch similar ho to aapke liye kaam aasan ho jata hai kyunki phir aap apni uh, jo presentation hai wo ek uh, zyada uniform audience ke liye target karte hain lekin agar aapko nahi hai, ag agar ek jo aapki audience hai unke similar uh, age ba age level background wagaira similar nahi hai to phir aapko ek andaza karna hoga ki aapki audience mein kis kisam ke log honge taaki aap apni presentation us hisab se banaye and th that is basically when you have tailored your presentation accordingly that is when your presentation can actually reach all segments of your audience now when we say knowledge of the subject this we talked about knowledge of the audience the next point is knowledge of the subject this basically means that whether you use notes 
or you use a manuscript that you are reading from or you are strictly relying on memory, you must know your subject well. Jo bhi aapka mode of delivery jo bhi ho, lekin aapko apne subject ke upar pura control hona chahiye. Agar koi gaps hain, agar koi aise areas hain jo aapko jinke baare mein aapko nahi pata aur wo aapki presentation mein aa sakte hain, unke upar koi sawaal uth sakte hain ya unke aapko us knowledge ke na hone se aapki presentation mein koi gaps nazar aa rahe hain, to phir aapka ye kaam hai, aapki responsibility hai ki aap un gaps ko fill karein aur aap जो चीज आपको नहीं पता उसके बारे में आप नॉलेज हासिल करें यू नीड टू ऑब्जर्व टाइम लिमिट्स यू नीड टू रिहर्स इफ यू डू नॉट स्टिक टू अ पर्टिकुलर टाइम दैन देर इज द चांस दैट योर प्रेजेंटेशन विल बी आइदर वेरी शॉर्ट और वेरी लॉन्ग द लाइकलीहुड इज दैट प्रेजेंटेशन टेंट टू गो ओवर टाइम सो यू नीड टू रिहर्स टू मेक श्योर दैट यू यू स्टिक टू द टाइम दैट हैज बिन गिवन इवन इफ नो टाइम लिमिट इज गिवन You should try to do justice to your subject in as little time as possible. Try to keep your presentation short rather than long because with a short presentation it's more likely that the audience will stay interested whereas with a long presentation they are more likely to lose interest. So if you have not been given a time limit then try to keep your presentation to the words the lower end try to keep it short but not at the expense of Uh, the content in the presentation. The presentation ko short rakhne ka matlab ye nahi hai ki aap apni presentation ko incomplete kar le. Zahir hai jo information zaruri hai wo to usme aapne istemal karni hi hai. Lekin koshish ye kare ki ek concise tarike se wo presentation ki jaye. Banisbat is, iske ki aap khama khame usko lamba kare. Your personal appearance affects your credibility. It affects how the audience views you and how you come across to them. इसलिए बहुत जरूरी है कि जो आपकी अपनी पर्सनल अपेयरेंस है वो इस तरह की हो कि आप प्रोफेशनल लगें आपके जो सुनने वाले हैं जो आपकी ऑडियंस में लोग बैठे हैं उनको ये अंदाजा हो कि आपने प्रिपेयर किया है आपने थोड़ा सा एफर्ट लगाया है क्योंकि आप वैल्यू करते हैं कि वो आपको किस तरह देखें आपके बारे में क्या सोचें इनफॉर्मल क्लोदिंग इज रेयरली अप्रोप्रिएट फॉर प्रोफेशनल प्रेजेंटेशन इट्स इट्स वेरी अनलाइकली दैट it will be acceptable for you to make a presentation in informal attire zahir hai aap ek professional setting mein hain beshak aap office mein normally informal kapdon mein jaye lekin jis din aapne presentation karni hai us din behtar hai ki aap thoda sa formal kapde pehne taaki aap zyada professional lage so that's why it's important that you should pay significant attention to personal grooming apne baal apna dress apna jo bhi aapka hulia hai wo presentation ke time aapka formal hona chahiye the delivery uh, is a very important aspect even if you've prepared well you've been conscious of time and your uh, personal appearance is uh, is very neat and very effective if you have not if you're not delivering properly then it everything can crumble all your preparation can go down the drain basically so um, when we talk of uh, presentation delivery it's important to keep in mind poise and enthusiasm we you need to keep in mind eye contact use of voice and use of time what do we mean when we say poise and enthusiasm basically it means that you should be well prepared and strive for muscular control alert attention vibrant interest in the subject and you should show an eagerness to communicate you need to be poised you need to look confident and you need to look enthusiastic you should not be you should your hands should not be shaking even if you're nervous it should not come across to the audience jo bhi ab aapki agar nervousness hai wo aapke sunne walon ko andaaza uska nahi hona chahiye aapko apne aap ko confident rakhna hai poised rakhna hai aapko alert rehna hai taki aapki audience alert reh sake aur aapne apna jo apna interest hai subject ke andar usko barqarar rakhna hai ताकि आपके ऑडियंस को ये पता चले कि आप उनको बताने में जो भी आप चीज़ बता रहे हैं उसके लिए आप ईगर हैं आप इंथुजियास्टिक हैं दैट शुड कम अक्रॉस अवॉइड डिस्ट्रैक्टिंग मैनरिजम्स जो भी कोई ऐसे ही आपके आपकी बॉडी लैंग्वेज होगी या कोई आप पेंसिल यूज़ कर रहे हैं या पेन यूज़ कर रहे हैं उनको इस तरह इस्तेमाल ना करें कि आपके ऑडियंस डिस्ट्रैक्ट हों फॉर एग्जाम्पल सम पीपल हैव दैबिट ऑफ टैपिंग on their if they have a pen in their hand they have the habit of tapping that 
constantly or they have a habit of fidgeting with something in their hand try to avoid things like that because they can distract the audience jo sunne wale hain wo aapko sunne ke bajaye unki attention aapke haathon pe ya aapki jo mannerisms hain unke upar chali jayegi aur phir wo aapke main subject se distract ho jayenge lekin iska ye matlab nahi hai ki aap ek frozen uh, statue ban ke khade ho jayenge you will move about uh, not excessively but a bit so that the audience knows that you are interacting with them and that you are enthusiastic during a presentation try to make eye contact with your uh, audience with most of the people in the room if not everybody in the room so make sure that you are looking at the people who are sitting in your presentation and that you are making eye contact don't look down or don't gaze blankly at a wall behind your audience if you make eye contact then it gives the impression that the audience knows that you are interested in them and that you are confident ye isi tarah hai jis tarah agar hum kisi se baat kar rahe ho apne uh, non professional setting mein bhi aur hum unse nazar nahi milayenge to unko ye lagega ki ya hum unse kuch chupa rahe hain ya hum jhoot bol rahe hain ya hum confident nahi hain unse baat karne mein isi tarah jab aap ek presentation kar rahe hain to eye contact rakhe taki aap sincere lage ताके और ताके जो आपके आ, सुनने वाले हैं उनका भी इंटरेस्ट बरकरार रहे अवॉइड फास्टनिंग योर गेज ऑन योर नोट्स ऑन योर चार्ट और स्क्रीन और ऑन सम पॉइंट इन स्पेस ओवर द हेड्स ऑफ द लिस्नर्स एज आई सेड डोंट डोंट जस्ट लुक एट योर नोट्स डोंट जस्ट लुक डाउन डोंट लुक जस्ट एट द स्क्रीन दैट द ऑडियंस इज सींग और एट द वॉल बिकॉज देन बेसिकली यू आर इंटरक्टिंग विद whatever you are looking at and you are not interacting with your audience zahir hai jiski taraf aap dekh rahe hain jiski taraf aap dekh ke bol rahe hain aapka to interaction phir usse hai jiska jo aur log baithe hain unse aapka interaction nahi rahega to isliye avoid kare is baat ko ki aap khali apne paper ko dekhein aur upar na dekhein iske ilawa aap ye bhi avoid kare ki aap audience mein sirf ek ya do logon se eye contact kar rahe hain aur bakiyon ko ignore kar rahe hain kyunki usse bhi जो आपके जिनके साथ आपका आपने आई कांटेक्ट बरकरार रख लिया है जो एक दो लोग हैं वो थोड़े से इंटिमिडेट भी हो जाएंगे और बाकी लोग लेफ्ट आउट भी फील करेंगे तो इसलिए इसका भी खासा नेगेटिव असर होता है इसलिए कोशिश करें कि आपका आई कांटेक्ट ऑडियंस में ज़्यादातर लोगों से हो आप सबकी तरफ देखें यूज ऑफ वॉइस डोंट स्पीक टू सॉफ्टली टू फास्ट और मम्बल यू ऑडियंस मस्ट बी एबल टू हेयर वॉट यू से एंड दे मस्ट बी एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड वॉट यू से सो अवॉयड Uh, uh speaking too fast and avoid speaking so slow that your audience goes off to sleep uh, another important thing is the time if you have not prepared adequately it's easy to become nervous and start rushing through your presentation so if you need to be careful that you don't speak too fast you don't finish your presentation long before the allotted time so instead try to use to take a deep breath if you become nervous try to use the pacing that you established during your rehearsals jo bhi aapne apni rehearsals mein timing ki thi usko koshish kare ki aap wohi timing rakhein when you're making a formal presentation the material of the presentation should be concise to the point and it should tell an interesting story in addition to the obvious things like content and visual aids uh, the following that we will talk about are just as important uh as the audience will subconsciously be taking them in they different things they obviously the obvious things are the content and the visual aids wo to ek aisi do aisi cheeze hain jo audience ko obviously nazar aa rahi hain lekin iske ilawa bhi kuch cheeze hain jo ke aur aapko zaruri hai ki aap unka khayal rakhein kyunki wo bhi audience ke upar kuch na kuch asar karengi inme se sabse pehli hai aapki awaaz your voice how you say things is as important as what you say so even if your content is very effective very impressive how you deliver that content is important don't speak too loud don't speak so, too soft as i said earlier your audience should not be getting the impression that you are shouting at them and they shouldn't feel that you are mumbling so keep your voice pleasant keep it at the right pitch so that uh, it gives a good impression uh, body language is important a subject in its own right and something about which much much has been written and said basically uh, body language is basically how you stand how you move about how you move your hands the movements of your body 
um, essentially your body movements express what your attitudes and thoughts really are. Now, if your hands are shaking, then it shows the audience that you are nervous. If you're standing in a frozen position with your hands closed, then it shows the audience that A, you are very tense, B, also, uh, and, and not relaxed, and also B, that if you, especially if your hands are closed, then you are not forthcoming to their ideas. It shows that you are closed, you're closed up. The appearance is important. First impressions influence the audience's attitude to you. So you should dress appropriately for the occasion. If you're sloppy, then the audience will automatically, when they see you on the stage or in front of them in a sloppy manner, a sloppy attire, hair going all over the place, looking untidy, then they will feel that you're a careless person and they will lose interest in the presentation or, or at least they will not take you very seriously. So keep, keep your appearance in mind as well. As with most personal skills, oral communication cannot be taught. You can only point the way. So don't think that you are teaching somebody. You are just giving them information. You are just persuading them. You are just pointing out the way to them. So as always, practice. It's essential so that you can improve your skills and also so that you can make the best of the individual presentations that you make. Okay? So practice. At the end, practice is very important. The more you practice, the better your presentation will be. Now, when you're preparing the presentation, what do you need to keep in mind at that point? Uh, you need to prepare the structure of your talk logically and carefully, uh, just as you would for a written report. If you are writing a written report, you can see that the structure of the structure is practice karte hain aap ye sochte hain main pehle kya likhu baad mein kya likhu isko kis tarah shuru karu kis tarah khatam karu isi tarah aap ek oral presentation ko bhi khasa carefully structure karenge ki pehle kya aayega baad mein kya aayega beech mein kya aayega aap ye bhi sochenge ki meri talk ke objectives kya hain why am i making this talk what do i hope to achieve out of it what are the main points that i want to highlight that is something that you need to keep in mind make a list of uh, these two things uh, as, you are start, as your starting point, your objectives and the main point that you want to uh, put across in your presentation. So if you've got the list of objectives, list of main points, that will make, you, make it easier for you to start. Write out the presentation in rough, just like you would uh, write out the draft of a written report. A rough draft banai apni presentation ka bhi, review kare usko. Usko dobara dekhe, usme dekhe kya chize add karni hai, kya chize usme se nikalni hai apne. Uh, if there are things that are irrelevant or superfluous, then delete them. Add information that you feel will be more relevant. Uh, check that the story that you're given, giving or whatever, if you're describing an event, if that, or if you're describing a process or idea, check that it is consistent and that it flows smoothly. Usme koi breaks na hai, koi gaps na hai. If there are things that you cannot easily express, possibly because you are in doubt about your understanding, then it's better to leave them unsaid. Agar koi aise nukte hain jin pe aapko lag raha hai ki shayad aap inko bahut achhi tarah explain na kar paaye, shayad isliye kyunki wo kuch complicated hain, aapko aapki khud shayad knowledge kam hai, aap wo gap fill nahi kar paaye hain, aapko unke baare mein nahi information mili, to bhi better hai ki unko chhod diya jaye. Bajaye iske ki aap unko istemal karein presentation mein aur phir ye pata chale ki aapki knowledge kam thi. Never, never read from a script. Don't write things down and read from it directly. It is also unwise to have the talk written out in, de out in detail as a, as a prompt sheet. Just try to keep points, notes. The chances, if you have something very long written down, then the main disadvantage of that is that there's a high chance that you will miss where you were in the presentation. If you have written a lot on the page, then you will forget to read it yourself. You will forget to read it yourself. If you have left your eyes on the paper, then when you go back to the paper, you will not get the point of where you have to start again. So it's the chances that you will not locate the thing you want to say amongst all the other texts. So don't locate the thing you want to say amongst all the other texts. Never read, don't make a script to read from. You should know most of what you want to say. If you don't, then you should not be giving the talk. Zahir hai, agar aapko apni jis chiz ke baare mein aap talk dhe rahe hai, uske baare mein puri information hai hi nahi, to phir shayad aapko wo talk nahi dheni chahiye. Isliye behtar hai ki aap cue cards banayin, jasip ke mene pehle ka 3x5 ke cards kar lehen, 
क्यू कार्ड्स बनाएं जिनके ऊपर आप सिर्फ की वर्ड्स लिखें की फ्रेजेस लिखें शायद अगर आप कोई स्केचेस या डायग्राम्स बनाना चाह रहे हैं जो कि बड़े आराम से आपको एक नज़र में समझ आ जाए कि आपने क्या लिखा है वो चीज़ें आप अपने क्यू कार्ड्स के ऊपर लिखें ताकि आपको उनकी तरफ बहुत देर तक देखना ना पड़े पोस्ट कार्ड्स आर आइडियल फॉर दिस दे आर अ गुड साइज यू कैन हैव की इन्फॉर्मेशन ऑन दैम सो यू कैन यूज पोस्ट कार्ड्स एंड दे लुक प्लेजेंट इज वेल बट डोंट फोगेट टू नंबर दैम अपने कार्ड्स के ऊपर नंबर डालें ताकि अगर आपके हाथ से गिर जाएं या एक आध कार्ड आगे पीछे हो जाए तो आपकी प्रेजेंटेशन सारी उल्टी पुल्टी ना हो जाए नंबर दैम सो दैट यू कैन ऑलवेज पुट दैम इन सीक्वेंस रिमेंबर ऑल्सो टू मार्क योर कार्ड्स according to the visual aids that go uh, go with them if there are any visual aids then uh, uh, that go with a particular cue then mark on your cards that there will be a visual aid here so that you have the right ohp uh, of uh, overhead projector slide or uh, transparency etc that is shown with them also rehearse your presentation first to yourself and then in front of some colleagues so that you don't make any mistakes the in uh, the initial rehearsal should consider how the words and sequence of visual aids go together so in the first present a uh, first rehearsal rehearse according to where you will have the visual aids what will you be saying and then obviously you will make uh, as you practice more you will become perfect also note how you will make the most effective use of your visual aids where the visual aids can make more uh, more of an impact Now, when you're actually delivering the presentation, when you're actually making the presentation, you need to greet the audience. For example, you will say, "Good morning, ladies and gentlemen." Um, you will tell them who you are, introduce yourself. Good presentations basically follow a particular formula, which will be that you will first tell the audience what you're going to tell them. You're going to basically this means that you will tell the audience what you're going to tell them. You're going to basically this means that you will tell the audience what you're going to tell them. Secondly, you will tell them. जिस चीज के बारे में भी है आप वो चीज उनको बताएंगे डिटेल में उस चीज को फिर आप एक्सपैंड करेंगे ये तो आपके प्रेजेंटेशन का मिडिल सेक्शन होगा एंड थर्ड एंड लास्ट एट द एंड यू विल यू विल री कैप वॉट यू हैव टोल दैम सो यू विल टेल द ऑडियंस वॉट यू विल टेल दैम यू विल देन इवेंचुअली टेल दैम वॉट यू नीड वॉट द नीड टू नो एंड देन यू विल री कैप यू विल टेल दैम वॉट दे वर टोल्ड it sounds as if you are constantly telling them but it really means that you are introducing then you are giving the main some main part of your presentation and then you are summarizing keep to the time allowed if you have been given a time limit stick to it uh if you can keep it short it's better to underrun than overrun and we've talked about this earlier as a rule allow 2 minutes for each general overhead transparency each transparency that you will be showing allow generally 2 minutes to discuss it or powerpoint slide if you're using powerpoint slides but if you want to develop any specific points then you can keep uh, allocate more than 2 minutes for a particular slide uh 35 mm slides are generally used more sparingly and stay on the screen longer so if you're using 35 mm slides then you will not be using too many of them you will keep them on the screen long and you will talk about them for longer uh however please remember that your audience will get bored with something on the screen for more than 5 minutes especially if you're not actively talking about it so if there's something that is on the screen for longer than 5 minutes you need to change it they need the audience needs more visual changes so that they can keep they can be alert and they can uh, remain interested in the presentation so either switch the display off or replace the slide with some form of wallpaper maybe the your company logo if you feel if you're not actively talking about a slide then replace it uh stick to the plan for the presentation don't be tempted to digress don't go here and there if when you've made a plan you've made an outline stick to it uh if you move away from it too much you will eat up your time you will waste time and end up in a dead end with no escape sometimes uh, it's very common that it happens that if you move away from the prepared presentation then you can't find a way to come back so try to stay on your track unless you are directly explicitly told not to leave time for discussion agar to aapko bataya gaya hai ki ji baad mein discussion nahi honi aap discussion ke liye time nahi chhode fir to theek hai lekin otherwise as a rule 
आप डिस्कशन के लिए पाँच मिनट हमेशा छोड़ें अगर ज़्यादा टाइम बताया गया है तो फिर ज़्यादा लेकिन फाइव फाइव मिनट्स इज़ जनरली सफिशेंट अब ताकि जो भी पॉइंट्स हों कोई आपकी प्रेजेंटेशन में कोई पॉइंट्स उठे हों वो लोग क्लैरिफाई करा सकें द सेशन चेयरमैन हु इट इज़ मे एक्सटेंड दिस इफ द क्वेश्चनिंग बिकम्स इंटरेस्टिंग सो ऑबियसली इफ पीपल हैव मोर क्वेश्चन दैन हुए इज ऑर्गेनाइज द प्रेजेंटेशन कैन ऑब्वियसली दैन गिव परमिशन टू हैव अ लॉन्गर क्वेश्चन आंसर सेशन एट द एंड ऑफ यू प्रेजेंटेशन ऑलवेज आस्क इफ दे आर एनी क्वेश्चन वेन यू आर आस्किंग फॉर क्वेश्चन डोंट बी टर्स डोंट बी वेरी शॉर्ट डोंट आस्क आस्क इन अ वे दैट द ऑडियंस फील्स इंटमीडिएटेड इस तरह मत पूछें कि ऑडियंस को ये लगे कि हम सवाल पूछ के कोई कसूर कर रहे हैं करेंगे या कोई गुनाह करेंगे उनको ये इम्प्रेशन मत दें कि अगर वो क्वेश्चन पूछ रहे हैं तो उनकी नॉलेज में कुछ कमी है लेकिन बल्कि इस तरह पूछें कि उनको ये लगे कि आप क्वेश्चन इन्वाइट कर रहे हैं और आप इनको इनक्रेज कर रहे हैं क्वेश्चन पूछने के लिए ताकि जो आपने प्रेजेंटेशन की है उसकी डिस्कशन और आगे बढ़ सके इफ क्वेश्चन आर स्लो एंड कमिंग एंड पीपल आर फीलिंग हेजिटेंट इन आस्किंग यू कैन आस्क यू कैन स्टार्ट थिंग्स ऑफ बाई आस्किंग अ क्वेश्चन ऑफ द ऑडियंस सो हैव अ क्वेश्चन प्रिपेयर जस्ट इन केस अगर आपको लगे कि ऑडियंस का सवाल आता कोई नहीं कोई नहीं पूछ रही तो फिर आप उनसे एक सवाल पूछ लें ताकि जरा सी वो जो उनकी हेजिटेशन है वो खत्म हो जाए वेन यू आर डिलीवरिंग द प्रजेंटेशन स्पीक क्लियरली डोंट शाउट और विस्पर जज द एकस्टिक्स ऑफ द रूम चेक करें पहले अगर हो सके तो उस कमरे में प्रेजेंटेशन से पहले जाके एक बार चेक कर लें कि उसकी एकस्टिक्स किस तरह की हैं आवाज़ उसमें गूंजती है पीछे तक आवाज़ जाती है या नहीं जाती एक्सेट्रा डोंट रश और टॉक डिलिबरेटली स्लोली ना बहुत आहिस्ता बोलें ना बहुत तेज़ बोलें बी नेचुरल बट डोंट बी वेरी कॉन्वर्सेशनल बिल्कुल ऐसा भी ना आपके सुनने वालों को लगे कि आप बिल्कुल ही कैजल हैं बिल्कुल ही रिलैक्सड हैं और ऐसे बात कर रहे हैं जिस तरह आप उनके ड्राइंग रूम में बैठे गपशप लगा रहे हैं ऐसे भी ना हो प्रोफेशनल लगें डिलिबरेटली पॉज एट की पॉइंट्स दिस हैज़ द इफेक्ट ऑफ एम्फोसाइजिंग द इम्पोर्टेंस ऑफ अ पर्टिकुलर पॉइंट दैट यू आर मेकिंग सो गिव पॉजेज सो दैट द ऑडियंस कैन ऑल्सो डाइजेस्ट वॉट यू आर सेंग बट डोंट मेक योर पॉजेज टू लॉन्ग अवॉइड जोक्स ऑलवेज दिस दिस इज ऑलवेज डिजास्ट्रस अनलेस यू आर नेचुरल at making jokes and you are very confident at what you're going to be saying as a joke generally what happens is that if me people make jokes if it doesn't go well with the audience then it can leave a very bad taste in the mouth a uh, mouth and it can leave a very awkward silence as well so try to avoid jokes just stick to the presentation to make the presentation interesting change your delivery but not obviously if you feel that the audience is getting bored change either your speed or the pitch of voice or use your hands to emphasize uh, points but don't indulge in too much hand waving don't your hands shouldn't be going all over the place use them a bit so that the audience stays interesting i- interested people can over time develop irritating habits so ask your colleagues if there's any particular habit that you have when making a presentation and if that seems irritating then you should avoid that look at the audience as much as possible but don't fix on an individual because it can be intimidating pitch your presentation towards the back of the room uh, or the back of the audience especially if it's a large auditorium or a large room don't face the display screen behind you if you have a screen that is behind you and uh, it is projecting uh, there's something information being projected on that don't face it and have your back to the audience try to look at your audience as much as possible other annoying habits can be standing in a position where you obscure the screen if you're standing in a way that you're in front of the screen that can be very irritating for the audience because obviously jo aapne screen pe cheez lagayi hai wo isliye hai ki audience usko dekh sake agar aap samne aake khade ho jayenge to phir wo audience ka view obstruct hoga in fact check uh, consciously check to make sure that they everybody in the audience can see what is on the screen so if there's anybody who you feel cannot see then try to accommodate them try to move if you feel that one section of the audience cannot see the screen don't mutter over the transparency or an over, um, overhead projector plate <clears throat> because what happens is a lot of the times people point to the overhead projector and they slide on that on the plate and they don't realize that they are blocking the projection of the image it's preferable to point to the screen rather than on the ohp 
uh, avoid moving about too much. You shouldn't be running around all over the place in front of the screen. It, because too much pacing up and down can unnerve the audience. Bohat distract hote hain aur lagta hai ki aap aap bahut tense hain. Also apart from your own body language, be aware of the audience's body language. Agar aapko lag raha hai ki audience mein log bilkul hi zyada hi relax ho gaye hain ya bore ho rahe hain, sone lage hain, to phir aap apni kuch na kuch pace change kare, speed change kare, koi aisi cheez kare ki audience ka interest wapas aaye. Know when to stop. and also when to cut out a piece of the presentation if you feel it's becoming too long and people are becoming bored then maybe you know you need to delete a section of the presentation and move on if you feel it's it's boring uh, visual aids can uh, significantly improve the interest in a presentation however they must be relevant to what you want to say and they must be well designed because a careless design or use of a slide can simply get in the way of a presentation what you use depends on the type of talk you are giving to jo bhi aapka visual aid ho wo effective ho well planned ho taaki presentation mein interest rahe some possibilities of visual aids are uh, overhead projection transparencies jinko hum ohps kehte hain 35 mm slides computer projection which can be in the form of powerpoint uh, applications such as excel uh, or applications like excel uh, video film these are very effective visual aids as well real objects either handled from the speaker's bench where you are or passed around this could be in the form of handouts or it could be any other real objects that you want to display flip chart or blackboard are uh, also effective they generally used as uh, a scratch pad to expand on a point so you can have a, uh, a flip chart or blackboard or whiteboard uh, on the stage or on your in your space so that you can expand on a point very quickly and you can also have a combination of these visual aids if you are an expert at using them uh, keep it simple however a complex set of hardware can result in confusion for the speaker and the audience make sure you know in advance how to operate the equipment whatever you are using and also when you want a particular display to appear sometimes a technician a technician will operate the equipment so arrange beforehand what is to happen and when a particular slide or uh, um object is to be uh, is to be shown to the audience uh, if you feel that th- there are things which are irrelevant superfluous then leave them out if you need to use a slide twice duplicate it instead of looking going back and looking for it so that you can repeat it uh, slides in ohps should contain minimum information uh, if there is too much information on slides and ohps then the audience gets confused and it will divert your audience's attention and they will take more time in reading than listening to you try to limit uh, words per slide to a maximum of 10 so don't use more than 10 words in one slide use a reasonable size font and a typeface which will enlarge well typically um, an 18 point times roman on ohps is is well is good and or or preferably larger a guideline is If you can read the OHP from a distance of two meters without projection, then it's probably okay. Avoid using a diagram prepared for a technical report in your talk. अगर कोई diagram आपने एक technical report के लिए बनाया है, तो उसको अपने presentation में मत इस्तेमाल करें, क्योंकि वो बहुत detail हो जाता है. Use color on your slides, but avoid orange and yellow because they don't show up very well uh, when they are projected. If you're only using text, white or yellow. on blue background is uh, very pleasant to look at and it's easy to read and then books on presentation techniques have a lot of detail as well on what to use and how to use it avoid adding to ohps with a pen during the talk don't write on ohps that you've prepared during your talk because it's messy the audience gets distracted and they can also see if your hand is shaking on the projector uh this is also another good reason why you should point to the screen rather than on the projector when you are uh, using the ohp consider the room lighting how is the room lit don't keep it too dark or too bright because if it's too bright then you need to keep switching off lights when you're projecting if it's too dark your audience will go off to sleep so check uh, the lighting if you need to keep switching lights off then know you should know where the light switches are and how to operate them in this lecture we looked at the different types of oral communication 
which were extempore, impromptu, memorization, and delivery by reading. We also looked at the different modes of delivery, the delivery guidelines, how to deliver a presentation, and how to actually make an oral presentation. Until next time, Allah Hafiz.